All right. Hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from sunny San Diego. And today I am delighted to be joined by Donnie Bovine, who is in Fort Worth, Texas. How are you doing, Donnie? Hey, John. Glad to be here, man. Uh, looking forward to hanging out with you, talking a little bit about sales and, and you know, see if we can't deliver some value to your listeners. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And Donnie is the CEO, Success Champion Networking and the founder of Badass Business Summit and the Growth Mode Podcast. And today what we're going to talk about is sales is a conversation with an outcome. All right. So um, that I think it's a really good point, uh, a conversation with an outcome, because sometimes it seems like it's a conversation for conversation's sake. <laughs> I would agree. Um, or if it's not a conversation for conversation to say, uh, people are trying to hard close. And in this day and age, if you hard close, you know, you're going to lose. So for me, you know, I grew up uh, in the sales game. I've never actually had a salary position. I've always been straight commission. And, right. you know, to be able to sell in a straight commission way, I mean, you, if you don't sell, you don't eat. But you you had to learn really really quick that the more human you became the more conversations you got into and a lot easier that sales got in general um, and if you tried any of those hard closing strategies and tactic it's a surefire way to get your teeth kicked in and thrown out of a lot of places so i had to grow up pretty quickly and and learn to put myself out there so you know when i jumped out on my own it was 100 percent. all right let's teach the world how they should really be selling and get past all this closing crap yeah no i i, I couldn't agree more and i think part of it too is that well number one it was happening before the pandemic i think people were starting to really want a little bit more authenticity from uh, mm -hmm. from their sales people authentic authenticity from people in general i think COVID accelerated that i think now if you are a salesperson and you are not authentic or you're as you said hard closing and you're not really taking a, a deep interest in what's going on you're just not going to succeed yeah well said you know I, I i i keep going back to that if you do your job right from a sales perspective. You go in, you have a real genuine adult conversation. You tell people it's a hundred percent okay to say no and mean those words. Then you're going to find that you will get to closure on every conversation. And the difference between closing and closure is closure means you're getting to a yes, no, or significant next step. Closing means you're going to beat the crap out of them until they give up, right? And <laughs> and so for me, it's really about how can I get them comfortable and get to actual closure? You know, so it, it's down to the little things. Like, I don't believe in overcoming objections. If you're overcoming objections, it means you screwed up somewhere else way long in the sales call. You know, so it's more about how do you get them to say no when they're just trying to beat around the bush and give you all this craziness and they just don't want to do business with you. So I, I just want those conversations to happen. I mean, I had a young gal that I talked to last week that was hemming and hawing about one of our programs. And I just simply said, you know what, let's do this. Let's call mm -hmm. it a no. Let's let's just take our no right now. And if something ever changes in your world, you come back to me. She goes, OK, it's a no. I said, how did that feel to be able to tell me no? And she goes, actually, really good. I said, if we hadn't gotten closure right then and there right, and we, we got to a no, how would it feel every time I reached out to you trying to get your business? She goes, yeah, that's the part I hate. I said, yeah. <laughs> so on every call, get to closure and be OK with the no. Um, it makes for a lot better conversations. Yeah, you know, I, I love that concept. I love the concept of, of closure because the, here's a huge complaint, as you know, from salespeople. They're like, oh, I had this great conversation. I had this great follow up meeting. And now they've just they're ghosting me. They've yeah. just gone dead. I can't get out. I'm trying everything. I'm texting them. I'm calling them. I'm sending, you know, carrier pigeons, whatever. And they're <laughs> just ghost. And, and that's a huge frustration for, for most salespeople. 
Yeah, for sure. I, I actually I don't I wish I could reference the article, but I saw an article recently um, that was on the idea of need for approval, which is a huge thing that salespeople struggle with because everybody's got to like you. And <laughs> what they talked about is there's actually a science and philosophy behind it's easier to be somewhat committal and then not hold up that end of whatever you committed to because people feel like that by ghosting you or not showing up that they're letting you down easier and it also makes them feel better because they didn't have to hurt somebody's feelings by saying no so it's a a lack of confidence on their part just as much as it is on the salesperson's part to not get a definitive answer and what I've found is by literally giving people permission, you get to the significant ending of a, of a, of a conversation, you know, the yes, no, or you have a committed next step where it's on each other's calendars and you are both expecting, looking forward to that next meeting and you know what the goal of that next meeting is and it better be a sales conversation to go for yes or no and yeah. it's empowering no, ab absolutely no absolutely I, I i agree and because um when i worked uh well, i ran huthwaite for a while which has been selling uh and we mm. trained a lot neil of rackham, uh, yeah, sales yeah. people yeah neil rackham stuff yeah good old neil love neil um but one of the things that we used to teach is you know, the difference, the difference between advancing uh, a sales opportunity and a continuation and a continuation is kind of what you're talking about here. A lot of people fall into because there's the opposite. There's the person who ghosts you and then there's the person who keeps meeting with you. Right. And you're not getting and you're not going any. And back in the back in the pre COVID days, like, yeah, they're happy to, for you to come and buy them lunch every you know couple of weeks or whatever. And you go back to your manager saying, oh, fantastic meeting today. You know, their things are going great. And, and then you ask, well, what's the progress in the sale? Um, oh, well, well, we're going to talk about it again next week. <laughs> for sure. Yeah, it, it's it's funny to me. And look at most people are going to take those micro feel good actions as an actual action as actually pushing the conversation forward because you know there's just so many own demons in their head that they're battling with that i mean how many times i'm sure you hear it quite often people will say well i just don't want to be a salesperson and my answer mm -hmm. is well, well well don't be don't be that grease ball go have mm -hmm. real conversations with people tell them you're nervous tell them that you know you're you're learning this process you know and i go back to what i said earlier the quickest you can get to a real authentic conversation the more genuine the conversation gets but so many years. I mean, I was with Sandler training, you know, and I trained mm -hmm. with them for seven and a half years, great organization, but they're so centered around that you got to get people into pain and you got to beat the crap out of them to get them. So that something they didn't know was wrong is now wrong <laughs> that, that they feel bad in, in the sales call. And I just, I want the opposite of that to happen. I want to provide them so much damn value, like literally give them all the answers and solutions. So they realize that I really give a crap about them, their business, what they're doing. And if we get to the end of the call and I've answered all their questions and like help them find a solution, even without going for me, as long as we both walk away from that conversation feeling good, I'm 100% okay with it. And they are too. Mm -hmm. Because eventually something's going to happen down the road where they're thinking, man, maybe we should do something more of this. And my name's going to pop up because I didn't beat the crap out of them and try and cause them so much pain or, you know, push them through <laughs> some sort of crazy freaking sales process. Yeah. And and it's it's that old adage, too, isn't it? Like that people, you know, often don't remember what you said, but they remember how you made them feel. Yeah. And I think but I go back to that point you made a few minutes ago about you know, people say, well, I, I don't really want to be a salesperson. It's one of the things that we're working, we're actually dedicated to trying to change that whole attitude where people think that there's something wrong with being a salesperson. 
rather than thinking of it differently that you are helping people you're solving problems and yeah, at the end of the day you actually fulfill a, a fantastic role in society because if you're if you're a salesperson you're involved in trade right and if you're trading you know people who trade together people who exchange things countries who trade together generally don't get into conflict generally uh, and it's therefore as a salesperson you have got this great role where you're there to solve problems you're there to help people and like i can't stand this thing when people say like oh uh we don't call ourselves sales people we call ourselves like <laughs> business analysts or something and i i always go well that's fantastic but guess what person you're talking to knows you're a salesperson for sure <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm with you and and you know, and you've heard the adage over the years where people are like, you know, if you're not a salesperson, why are you trying to sell me on the concept you're not a salesperson? I, I just hate all that. Um, mm -hmm. For me, it comes down to, look, if you can look at yourself in the mirror and be proud of what you're doing, like, like literally want to tell others what you sell, you know, and, and you want to have these amazing, wonderful conversations then sales can get a lot easier. I don't want to say that it's easy. I'm just, they can get easier because mm -hmm. you're now going in and having these great conversations. But I think oftentimes people are selling crap that they don't care about. You know, they, yeah. they couldn't find a, a job of doing something when they love. So now they're a freaking salesperson selling something that they really don't give a dang about. Which I've done it, did a time or two over my career. And when you get into that, place and you're not actually passionate about what you sell then then the conversations try and, and and just get to the end as quickly as possible and the desperation comes out and all these these weird things happen and truth of the matter is you don't turn your passion into business you find some way to get passionate about what you do and then you go have some fun conversations with that passion and 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 it really ups the level of the conversations that people have and when you can be passionate about it you can be proud of it you can love it i mean you can deliver real results and it goes back to once you're proud of you the conversations get a lot more fun yeah no that's that's so that's so insightful and i, I love that part about the passion because yeah if it when somebody comes to sell me something right if i don't believe that they love their product or that they are excited about you know helping me you know i'm already kind of switched off and the thing is it doesn't have to be anything you know it doesn't have to be anything huge and high and i had to be honest i had to replace a, a, a heater here um a couple of months ago and the sales guy a couple of different sales guys came in from different companies one of the guys came in and he was just fantastic he loved he loved everything to do with mm -hmm. AC and heating. And he was telling me the difference between the machines and this and that and saying, oh, yeah, don't pay extra for that. That's useless, all that kind of stuff. But just the passion for for AC and heating, just it was in, infectious. Yeah. Isn't it amazing that you can feel that when you know they're legitimately into what they're doing? I had a very similar experience, except it was my condenser, not my heater, the outside <laughs> unit. And we had three different companies coming out because I really, you know, we didn't have a relationship with a local company. And, you know, the first guy came out and all he wanted to do was sell me these different packages. And it wasn't even really a conversation. But the last guy that showed up and he broke out his gauges, he were all on his hands and knees. He was, you know, kind of walking me step by step through everything and, you know, telling me a lot of stuff that I could do on my own. And. You know, none of these people knew that once upon a time I did HVAC sales, right? Wow. So I know how they're supposed and 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 this last guy, you could tell he threw the sales book out the window and was just completely in love with what he was doing and and was prideful. I mean, he was even picking up and and thing I we haven't even picked him up as a as our company yet. And he was like taping lines together so they look neat. I mean, he was just doing all the stuff and i'm like you're our guy you know uh mm -hmm. and and hired him in and it comes down to he was just completely passionate he truly loved doing the hvac thing yeah and i just think i just think it's wonderful when people like get in get into that mode of and and the thing is you have to believe you can't you can't fake that and i and i love nowadays as i mentioned earlier I, there's a lot of talk about authenticity and there's lots of people saying 
how you can be authentic. I mean, how you can be authentic. You know, you're either authentic or you're not, really, at the end of the day. Well, I, I think the confusion comes is people hear authenticity and they think, well, I need to share what I had for breakfast. And that's not what authenticity means by any stretch of the imagination. You know, for, for me, authenticity is about showing up, being you, but connecting on things that you want to talk and connect with people about. Like recently on LinkedIn, I put out that as a 45-year-old man, I was diagnosed with ADHD. And, you know, which was kind of a relief for me that helped me understand a lot of the way I've done things through life. And the amount of people that came out of the woodworks to either comment or send me a message that they've always wondered themselves, what was the process right. and steps I went through to get diagnosed. And before I put that post out, I had the cognizant thought to go, OK, if I tell the world that I have ADHD, well, I say the world, you know, the 10 people that follow me, right? But if I tell the world <laughs> <laughs> that I have ADHD, will that resonate with the audience that I want to talk to? And a lot of people that are clients and that we work with are a lot of small business owners and entrepreneurs. And one of the things the doctor told me about ADHD in particular, he's like, you know, a lot of entrepreneurs that become entrepreneurs late in life, like I did, I wasn't 40, I was 40 years old when I started my companies. Um, they discover their ADHD because they found themselves in so much stress that things really started getting haywire and everything's kind of uh, uh, accelerated, if you will. So that was kind of the key factor to me putting out there, hey, that I have ADHD. And it was just really, really cool to watch the number of people comment, send messages on it and everything else. So for me, that's where authenticity comes into play. And I was telling this story to a young lady and she said, mm -hmm well, do I have to share my traumas and the things I went to? And I'm like, no, no, you don't have to share your traumas. You share the stories that will resonate with the people. And it's not about making things up. I mean, like this morning, I wrote a story about a baby goose we have on our farm, you know, and how I watched it figure out how to get up a couple of steps. And, you know, it was the whole idea of you got to do a bunch of crap, try things different ways to figure out how to actually, you know, make things work. And, you know, uh, it's it's not about sharing every detail of your life, even in general conversations. It's about sharing the details of things you want to connect with others on. Yeah, no, I, I, I couldn't agree more because I do feel sometimes that there is you know, people do cross over or some, not just people cross over, but they're advised sometimes like I love this thing nowadays where people say, be vulnerable, you know, be vulnerable. <laughs> I, I don't even know what that means, to be Me honest. Either. But <laughs> but uh, to your point, to your point, I think it's it's like it's having people go, oh, so be vulnerable. So I have to say something about myself that I don't really want to share. And then it just makes people more uncomfortable. But the genuine, as you said, in your in your example there, they're just genuinely sharing it within a context of of you know who you were talking to or the conversation then that that's that's where the authenticity comes in not not just saying okay i have my list of traumas here which one will i pick for this guy? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah well it's like you know growing up they always said you know go find commonality you know go into somebody's office look around see what they got and comment on it. stop doing all that if you go in and you have real conversation and what i mean by real conversation is you, i mean if most people would go in and say, Hey, I'm Donnie, you know, you know why I'm here. How would you like to proceed? Do, should we, you know, have a little small talk, get to know each other? Do you want me to go straight into what I want to talk about? Do you want to see some sort of presentation? What makes this a better conversation for you? Start out and you'll be blown away by the number of people go, well, let's just get to know each other. Cool. My first mm -hmm. move is always in. You know, tell me your story. How'd you get here? Or if they say go straight to business presentation, go cool. Why am I sitting here? You know, yeah. and and you just are having a real conversation. It's it, it's it's not rocket science to do this. Yeah, and what I like about what you said there, Donny, is the is because this happens to me a lot, right? It, and sometimes I'm dealing with a lot of people who are trying to sell me different kinds of services. And sometimes they're services I'm very familiar with. Uh, so when somebody calls me up and they start to try and take you through this process, and obviously <laughs> I've been in the sales training game, I know what the thing is. 
But people get discombobulated or thrown off when you say, yeah, listen, can we just cut down? I know how all of this works and, and I've done it. Can we just cut down to, I want to know how you do it and what you cost from you. So let's just get straight down to business. And they almost kind of resist you and they go, well, yeah, we can get to that. But first I would like to, and I'm like, okay, well, I'm out of this conversation yeah, that's out. soon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So what's funny is, is so anytime somebody tries to sell us something, me and my COO, Kevin Snow, we always do a dual call. And it, we found that it allows us because he's he's very analytically driven. Mm -hmm. So when we're making especially big decisions, right. it's fun to have him along for the ride. But oftentimes, you know, we're chatting back and forth because we're doing a lot of sales calls on Zoom, of course, and when people are trying to sell us and we're chatting back and forth. And as soon as somebody starts going into their their pitch deck or like we had a promotional product company try and sell us stuff the other day and this guy wanted to take us through the history of the promotional product industry. <laughs> and Kevin just sent me a message. He's like, oh, crap. You know, it's like, I said, like, right, look. I get it. I said, uh, all we're looking for is somebody who can say, hey, this is some of the new industry trends we're finding. This is what's working at different things. You should have a look at this. I don't need the history of, of promotional products. And he's like, OK, well, let me tell you what happened in 1945. And he just went and tried to go straight right back uh, in it. And I just looked this. at Kevin. I'm like, hey, you know what? I appreciate this, but we're just not going to be a fit for each other. <laughs> <laughs> I love I love I, I love that example because uh, it happens a lot and mm -hmm. I think people it's not exaggerating this happens a lot and if you find yourself doing it because I love what Donnie just told you there is like talk to the person about about how they want this to proceed I think that's so that that's that's very profound and people should take that on board I have another example Donnie uh, I was talking to somebody recently who is a sales trainer coach and he was telling me I think it was pre-COVID, but he was doing a ride along with the salesperson in the car and the salesperson got a text from a prospect, right? Just asking him a simple mm -hmm. question. So what the sales guy do? Called him immediately. Yeah. And then they, and the guy and the coach was listening and they had a re and the conversation was really awkward. And the guy came off and the coach had said, ah, said, uh, why did you call him? And he goes, well, cause I, I thought it, uh, I'd, I'd get on immediately and we could get in. He said, yeah, but he texted you. Did you text him back to say, would you like to call or do you just want the, you know, do you just want the straight answer or whatever? But he didn't communicate with the with the prospect the way the prospect wanted yep. to be communicated with and ended up with a very, very awkward call that probably set everything back. For sure. And, you know, uh, people will communicate with you how they want to be communicated yeah. back for sure. I mean, I got a, a funny ride along. So I used to do that with when I was doing Sandler is we'd get the new guys and we go ride along with them. My funny thing that would always happen is on the way to, and I would go as the sales guy in training, right? I wouldn't go as the sales trainer. I'd go as a right. sales guy in training so I wouldn't bail them out. And so on the way to the, the sales call, we would have this great conversation about their family, you know, what they want to be when they grow, you know, and all this stuff. And it'd be so loose. And then we'd pull up to the office and then you get the Jekyll and Hyde. It's like, all right, game face. Right? Now it's time to do whatever. And, uh, you'd watch them go in and they became Mr. or Mrs. freaking salesperson. And, and, and they'd go in and middle of sales call. Oftentimes they were like, so Donnie, what do you think here? I'm like, man, I'm just learning this stuff. I'm, I'm, I'm the just learning. So I can't bail you out. And then we'd get back out to the car and we'd sit down. And I'm like, they're like, man, how do you think that went? And I'm like, really bad. And they're like, why do you think I'm really bad? I'm like, what happened to the person that was just talking to me about their family and, you know, their dreams and, and what they want to do? What happened when you stepped out of the car into light bulb moment for them to realize that they got this whole idea of I got to put my game face on, you know, don't let, let them see you sweat and all that stuff when when, you know, if you don't go in and sell as you are who you are. At some point, your real personality is going to come out and you're going to lose authenticity. You're going to lose trust from that prospect. You're going to lose a real thing because all of a sudden you're not who they met when they first met them. And mm -hmm. it's a it's a massive disconnect that happens and what forces a lot of people to end up doing more transactions more transactional sales versus thinking about the lifetime, you know, lifetime value of the overall counter mm -hmm. client.
Yeah, no, I I agree, and that that happens that happens so often. It's like people think they have to create a, a persona, and eventually that's that's something that's so hard to maintain anyway in the long run. Yeah. Uh, but but as you said, I mean, if you just go in and you're authentic and you have the conversations and what you said earlier, which is fantastic about asking the person how they want to proceed. Uh, but I think it also boils down to I think if you feel like you need to put on a persona and that I mean there's something you're lacking some confidence yourself. Mm. Uh, maybe you need to go, maybe you need to go work with somebody like Donnie and figure it out. But uh, you are, I mean, for me, you're, you're lacking a certain amount of, of confidence or, you know, you've got some insecurities that you can't be yourself, that you feel you have to put this game face on. Yeah, I agree. I think for a lot of people because they have so many ill perceived conceptions of what sales actually is mm -hmm. you know they they have the idea of sales of when they think about sales they think of every bad salesperson they've ever dealt with yep. You know, For so sure. they think about the person at the mall with the clipboards that's chasing them down, you know, <laughs> uh, or my, my, my favorite bad sales guy of all times is my wife and I went to an RV show here in Fort Worth, Texas. And as we're looking at RVs, you know, we love to go camping and stuff. Um, this mm -hmm. guy, and once I see what he's doing, I'm like, okay, I grabbed my wife. I'm like, babe, we're going to watch this a second just because I was so fascinated by it. <laughs> but they had the prices of the RV on the outside of the RV. And this guy would run outside the RV, look at the price and goes, that can't be right. And then he would run inside, shuffle some papers around and come out and look and louder this time go, that can't be right. He goes, they mismarked the price of this camper. And he's saying it loud enough now people are like trying to listen to him. And then he would run back in and check one more time. Then he'd come back out. He goes, yeah, we're going to have to honor this pricing. And you knew it was such a bad scam. <laughs> that he was doing this and so we sat there for a while and i'm like babe we might as well get popcorn because this guy's just gonna do this crap all day long but i think that's a hundred percent what people think of when they think of a salesperson they think of somebody who's trying to get one over on them mm. and if you're true to yourself you don't try and price gouge you try and offer a genuine service you have the courage to walk away from it when it's not a good fit for them and you go have these genuine conversations, you will ultimately outsell and outwin everybody you get stacked up against because they may win early in a transactional type game. They may get a lot more deals closed for you early on, but the lifetime value is going to win because people are going to want to stay with the genuine and real people for a lot longer, stay heavily invested in them is you got to remember guys, people buy from people, not companies. Mm -hmm. And so, so it comes down to that trusting relationship with you. And the more you can maintain that, that trusting factor, that equal business stature, the, the lot more fun sales gets in the long run. Yeah, listen, I think that's fantastic, Donnie, because at the end of the day, sales is not about tricks. It's not about, no. you know, fooling people, pulling one over. It, it, as we said a, a number of times, be yourself and be authentic. Um, listen, Donnie, this has been fantastic. The time's flown. I can't believe we're already uh, <laughs> this far into it. Um, all Donnie's information will be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do. For sure, for sure. And guys, do me one favor. If 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 you listen to this episode hanging out with us and you got any little bit of value, one tip, think something that may help you out, do him a favor and make sure you're subscribed to the show. As a fellow podcaster, I can tell you having more people who are tuning in and listening uh, means everything. But the biggest thing you can do is, is share this show out with one other person who would get value from this information it's literally like you walked up and gave him a, a a you know a virtual hug if you will so uh my really quick story i did four years in the marine corps 20 years straight commission sales uh turned 40 before i even knew the whole idea of being an entrepreneur business owner uh, in September 2017, finally got the courage to jump out and launch my own company. Six months into that ride, I almost lost everything I owned because I had no idea how to be a business owner. Found podcasting, was also under a non-compete. And, you know, between podcasting and continuing to screw things up and move forward, started finding a little bit of success. 
Uh, my show ended up hitting number 22 out of all podcasts in the world, and we were starting to get momentum. My non-compete came up, and now I was able to go talk about sales more, and with the momentum of the podcast success, flash forward to where we are now, and we run the Success Champion family of companies. We have two top podcasts, four best-selling books, and a partridge in a pear tree. So <laughs> uh, it's it's been a crazy damn ride, but you know uh it's been fun and truly my biggest passion is helping these these small business owners that that are trying to figure it out that are banging their head against the wall um to get them to rock and roll and one of our greatest businesses we developed was success champion networking where we changed how the world networks and we now have over 50 chapters across the us we're opening up in canada we're opening it up in ireland and we just fixed everything that people hated about networking. And it's been a lot of fun to build and put together. Well, that's fantastic. Um, and it's great that you're doing it in Ireland. <laughs> no <matter laughs> <first>. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, listen, Donnie, thanks again. Um, this has been fantastic. Hey, thank you all for watching and listening. And I'll see you all again very soon. Thank you. Yeah.